Hey, Jorge Armando Navarro here, creator and founder of Network Engineer Academy. And today I wanna go over a question that you probably have right now. And that is, I got my CCNA routing and switching. So now what the hell should I do? And also that was a question that came from Ali. He messaged me and told me, what would you recommend after finishing my CCNA? Because I'm at that point and I don't know what to do next. And this is exactly what I'm gonna go over just right now. But let me just tell you, a true Maven network systems engineer have a plan of action. And that basically means that you have a reverse engineer plan in front of you. You have to reverse engineer your career. And if you don't do that, you're gonna pass the next few years in your career in Wonderland that you don't know what to do, okay? So after this video, you're gonna have a plan of action and exactly what you should do right now. And just because that's exactly what I will do if I have, start, if I have to start my career all over again, right? So you're at this point where you're gonna, when you're gonna get your CCNA routing and switching or you just have your CCNA routing and switching, right? So this is exactly what I will do get my CCNA security right away. I wouldn't, you know, uh, think about it twice. I wouldn't rest. Oh, I got my CCNA routing and switching. No, let me take a week or two a month so I can, you know, goofy around. No, you don't do that. After you get your CCNA routing and switching, you right away go and get your CCNA security or you get your CCNA data center Cisco certification, either or. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why you should do that, right? But let's go over it. Who do you think it will be more valuable to the marketplace? Someone that has only the CCNA routing and switching or someone just like you, just like you, they have your CCNA routing and switching and your CCNA security or your CCNA data center. Obviously you, right? Because they're gonna perceive you with more knowledge, with more hands-on and different technologies, not just one. And think about it. How many people have two CCNAs? Just a few. So you have to go that extra mile. And let me tell you, when you go that extra mile, extra mile, that's only a few people out there. So more advantages, opportunities for you. So you have to do that, okay? So now let's go over the plan that I would recommend you to do because once again, this is exactly what I will do. So you got your CCNA routing and switching or you're about to get your CCNA routing and switching. So what do you do next, huh? Exactly, you get your CCNA security. Now, probably probably some of you are thinking, okay, what's the CCNA security? So let me just give you a few points, okay? It's all about security access, about routing, switching, VPN, how to configure VPN connections, uh, access control list, and also introduction to ASA firewalls. Huge thing out there, high in demand, right? Now, if you decide to, you know what, I just wanna, I did some research and I wanna do something with you know data center, you know, kind of in the back end. So you probably wanna get your CCNA data center and a few points will be, they're gonna go over data center architecture, introduction to Nexus switching and virtualization. So now let me tell you, Nexus switching, it's huge, huge in high end demand right now in any job market, okay, in the IT. So if you right now do a research, you're gonna find out that a lot of employers are looking for someone that know how to configure Nexus switches. And unfortunately, because you just got your CCNA router and switching, you're not gonna get to that point, okay? This is why you need to get right away your second certification. Now virtualization, it's everything right now, right? For the past three, five years, we've seen many companies going to virtualize. They save a lot of money, so it makes sense. So this is why, again, that you need to get or your CCNA security or your CCNA data center, because those are in high in demand. Instead of going with Microsoft, with a VMware, a Compatia, this is exactly what I will do right now, okay? So now, once you get those two certifications, you need to move to another position that they can value your knowledge, your experience, and what you can do right now. That's exactly what you need to do, okay? Now you're at the point where, yeah, I got my next position or my first job with those two certifications. Now what, Jorge? What's my next step? The next step, you need to get your CCMP routing and switching. And once again, it doesn't matter if you wanna be a senior systems engineer, 
because you need to have a really good background and networking for you to be a truly high paying senior systems engineer. You, have to have, you need to have a really great background and networking, okay? And that CCMP will give you that. Now, at this point is when you need to decide, okay, I love Cisco, I'm in love with Cisco, with networking and everything in it, and I just wanna focus. But I still wanna follow my path, my career, and become a high-end paying network systems engineer. So what will you do? This is exactly what I will do, right? You got, let's say, going back, you got your CCNA security, now you have to go after your CCMP security. That's, I think, four exams right now that you need to take. Or let's say that you decided to go with your CCNA data center. Then you get your CCMP data center. And obviously you have to, it's at the point where you're like, you get more hands on and expertise, more expertise than just having the CCNA on, on security or the data center, right? So now you get one of those two. So what's next? VimWare. You have to become VimWare certified. You have to, that's the future. The future is right now. And what I'm telling you is are everything that's working right now and that you need to have for you to become a truly a Maven, a Maven network systems engineer. And I'm gonna go over another video that's gonna go over that. What's a Maven network systems engineer, okay? But that's basically it. Now. You're probably thinking like, what the hell is that? That's VMware Certified Associate on Network Virtualization. And once again, just a few points for you to go over. That's introduction to NSX and virtual networks, vSphere networking and network security. And it has to do a lot of with uh, virtualization and networks with a VMware vendor, okay? Now, let's go back and you're here on the CCMP. And you're like, okay, Jorge, you know, I do love Cisco, but I also love Microsoft. You know, I wouldn't mind to be in a position that I'm a senior systems network engineer or just systems engineer, you know? So that's exactly what you should do. You should get your MCSA 2012 SA. What's SA? Solutions Associates. And that you take three exams. And just a few points, once again, you go over and manage Active Directory, DNS, DHCP, group policies, Hyper-V. Hyper-V is like VMware. It's everything that has to do with virtualization, right? But it's just the Microsoft. Uh, NLB network load balancing, DFS, distribution file servers, system, and VPN. That's basically a few points when you go and get your MCSA 2012. And at that point, let's say you go, you have your CCMP routing and switching, your MCSA 2012 uh, solutions associate, you should be able the way that you're gonna position and market yourself in the IT field to be able to get a job that will pay you six figures on this career. And I will go over in more detail in another videos, okay? But now, okay, I got my MCSA 2012 Solutions Associates. So, what next? <laughs> Guess, right? A VMware certification, you have to have it. And in this case, instead of taking the network virtualization, you're gonna take data center virtualization and just a few points. That's a VMware overview. If you don't know exactly what that is, it's gonna go over what's a VMware. Once it's everything virtualized, right? Out there right now. Hypervisor, virtual switches. So right now you're working with physical and now you're going in virtual switching. You know how it works in the back end. And HA, uh, high ability, vMotion. vMotion is just basically how you can move a server without shutting or well, yeah, accept it without shutting them down to another host. Like just move it. You know, you don't have to shut down the server. You know, all the applications, whatever it's on the server, it's working, you just move it from this point to that point and no one noticed. That's huge, right? That's why like we are a high paying network systems engineers when we know this, okay? So write it down, but if you just go to the website, it's just gonna appear underneath here, it's gonna be uh, a paper that you can download, like a PDF file that you can download for you to have it. But once again, this is exactly what I should do. I wouldn't stop until I get here because this is gonna get me a job that's gonna pay me six figures on this career. If you follow my advice, this is a plan of action that you need to execute and you need to right now sit down and have a 
a reverse engineer career plan in front of you. And this is your reverse engineer plan for you. Okay? So I hope you like this video. Comment, like it, share it, whatever you do. I wish you the best. Go out there, kick some ass. And once again, you can download this, um, uh, this PDF file underneath. Should be a link underneath this video. And I will talk to you soon.